Let's take the Belmonts from the Castlevania series and Smash Brothers and bring them from level 1 to level 20 in Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition. And there's going to be one key challenge that we're going to have to overcome. In the Castlevania series, you use a whip very often, and the whip has a low damage dice. So we need to make sure we overcome that and make a whip good, while still being able to use a variety of weapons depending on what you pick up in the Castlevania games. So let's go ahead and dive in with the race. If you're going with the Belmonts, chances are you're going to be a human. So we're going to choose human variants. This allows us to choose a skill right away. So we're going to take perception because it's pretty darn good to have. And then you get to take a feat. And since we are going to definitely focus on using a whip, that does slashing damage. So we're going to choose the feat Slasher. This allows us to boost up either our strength or dexterity by one. And once per turn, when you hit a creature with an attack that deals slashing damage, you can reduce its speed by 10 feet. And finally, when you score a critical hit that deals slashing damage, you grievously wound it. So until the start of your next turn, that target has disadvantage on all attack rolls. Then when it comes to a background, you will come from a long line of vampire hunters known as the Belmonts. So there is a background called Inheritor. And that vampire Vampire hunting whip happens to be passed down through your lineage, and inheritor is all about an object of some sort of importance being passed down, so we can say that it's that whip. This gives us skill proficiencies in survival, plus one other of either arcana, history, or religion. So we're going to take religion, because there seems to be a significant amount of religious symbols throughout the Castlevania series. Then when it comes to some stats, we're going to focus mostly on physical, putting 15 points into strength and constitution, boosting our dexterity up to 13, and then making sure we have a decent amount of wisdom to play with, bringing that up to 12. That means we dump our intelligence and charisma, and then we have two points from our racial bonus, so we're gonna bring our strength and constitution up to 16, and thanks to our slasher feat, we can boost our dexterity by one more, bringing it to 14. Then when it comes to a starting class, we are usually focused on targeting one big bad enemy per large level, and we happen to have a favored type of enemy amongst them. So if you have a favored enemy, it's always great to go with a ranger. When you become a ranger, you get access to light armor, medium armor, and shields, you get access to all weapons, and you get saving throws and strength and dexterity. Then you get to choose three skills. We're going to take athletics to help with the physical stuff, and then most of our other skills that we would want are already covered by our background and race. So let's just go ahead and make use of some of that wisdom, take insight and animal handling, because I was tempted to take stealth, but frankly, you just kind of power walk into Dracula's mansion and don't usually worry about stealth, so I'm not going to worry about it either. Then at first level of ranger, you get to choose a favored enemy. And since we're mostly targeting undead creatures, including including Dracula himself, let's go ahead and make that favorite enemy undead. This gives us advantage on survival checks to track undead, as well as advantage on intelligence checks to recall information about them. Also at first level, you can choose Natural Explorer, which is the original feature from being a ranger, but they updated it later so you can optionally choose Deft Explorer instead. And that's what we're going to take. This gives us some additional boost throughout leveling up in Ranger. And the first one we get is Canning. This allows us to double our skill proficiency in one skill. So let's go ahead and double the proficiency with our athletics. So you can make the jumps from platform to platform a little easier. Then at second level of Ranger, you get some spell casting, which we'll cover in a bit. But you also get a fighting style. And we want to boost up that whip's damage a bit. So we're going to take the fighting style, dueling. This makes it so when you're wielding a melee weapon in one hand and no other weapons, you get plus two bonus to the damage rolls with that weapon. So now with the stats that we have, we can focus more on using our strength because you have a solid chunk of muscle on you. We can use our dexterity to boost up our armor class while wearing medium armor because we have access to that as a ranger. And since a whip is a finesse weapon, we can use our strength or our dexterity, but our strength is a little better. So that means when we hit, we already have a plus five to the damage between the 16 on our strength and the plus two from dueling, helping to mitigate some of the lower damage of using a whip. But using a whip does have the benefit of having the feature reach, meaning that you can attack something that's up to 10 feet away instead of just five. Then at third level of ranger, you get primeval awareness, so you can expend a spell slot, and for one minute, you can sense whether certain types of creatures are present within one mile, whether there's any aberrations, celestials, dragons, elemental, fey, fiends, or undead. Also at third level of ranger, you get to choose Use a ranger conclave, otherwise known as a subclass. And there's a great subclass for single target enemies, especially if you have to one-on-one -on -one go up against Dracula. And that's going to be a monster slayer. Becoming a monster slayer automatically grants you a couple extra spells. And at this level, you get protection from evil and good. 
And this is especially useful for going up against undead, because when you cast this spell on yourself, you automatically have slight protections against any aberrations, celestials, elementals, fey, fiends, or undead, making it so they always have disadvantage on attacking you, and you can't be charmed frightened or possessed by any of them. And if you happen to already be under one of those effects, you automatically have advantage on any new saving throw against them. So I definitely keep this active in the more dangerous situations, but if you're just worried about boosting up the damage from your whip, you're gonna wanna make sure your Hunter's Mark is active instead, because the spell Hunter's Mark is gonna make it so any attack you make with that lowly little d4 damage from your whip gets another plus 1d6 every time you strike an enemy that's targeted by your Hunter's Mark. Then another Another feature you get from choosing the Monster Slayer Conclave at level 3 is Hunter's Sense. So as an action, you can choose one creature that you can see within 60 feet of you, and you immediately learn whether the creature has any damage immunities, resistances, or vulnerabilities, and what they are. And then finally, the last feature you get at third level of choosing Monster Slayer is Slayer's Prey. So as a bonus action, you designate one creature that you can see within 60 feet of you, and the first time you hit that target with a weapon on each of your turns, you can deal an extra 1d6 damage from the weapon. And this does stack with Hunter's Mark. So your whip, which would usually just deal a 1d4, now deals 1d4 plus 1d6 if you have Hunter's Mark active and another 1d6 if you have Slayer's Prey active. Then add a plus two from your dueling fighting style and you can add your strength modifier on top of it. Then at fourth level of Ranger, you get an ability score improvement. So let's go ahead and just boost up that strength because that's what we wanna focus on a little bit more with this build. Then at fifth level of Ranger, you get extra attack. So now you can attack twice with that whip instead of just once. But don't forget, you can also pick up a few other random items if you'd prefer those instead. So you could throw a hand axe instead, or throw out some daggers. But it might be a little harder to find those potions to drop the alchemist fire. Also at 5th level of Ranger, you get access to second level spell slots, which as a monster slayer, you automatically get Zone of Truth, even if that doesn't fit the character quite as much. Then at 6th level of Ranger, you get to choose another favored enemy. So we're going to pick Monstrosities, because you do essentially go up against Frankenstein's monster at a certain point, and I don't see that as being anything other than a monstrosity or undead. So now we have both our bases covered. Also, you get another feature from Deft Explorer, granting you roving. So now your walking speed is increased by five feet, and you gain a climbing speed and a swimming speed equal to your walking speed. Then at seventh level of Ranger, you get another feature from your Monster Slayer, Supernatural Defense. So you gain extra resilience against your prey's assaults on your mind and body. When the target of your Slayer's prey forces you to make a saving throw, and whenever you make an ability check to escape that target's grapple, you get to add a d6 to your roll. Then at 8th level of Ranger, you get another ability score improvement. So let's go ahead and just max out that strength so you can do as much damage as possible. So now the first hit with your whip can deal 1d4 from the whip damage, 1d6 if you have Hunter's Mark active, another 1d6 from Slayer's Prey, plus a flat 2 damage from your dueling fighting style, and another plus 5 from your strength modifier. And you also get the feature Land Strike. So now you can pass through non-magical plants without Without being slowed and without taking damage from them if they have thorns or spines or similar hazards and additionally you actually have advantage on saving throws against plants that are magically created or manipulated to impede movement like the entangled spell then at ninth level of ranger you get access to third level spell slot which as a monster slayer automatically grants you the spell magic circle and then at tenth level of ranger you get another feature from your depth explorer granting you tireless so you can give yourself a number of temporary hit points equal to 1d8 plus your wisdom modifier as an action, as if you randomly come across some chicken that fell out of a wall, boosting up your health a little bit. And additionally, if you happen to have any level of exhaustion, you can actually reduce it by one if you just take a short rest. Additionally, at 10th level, you could have hide in plain sight, which would allow you to spend a minute camouflaging yourself, but that's not nearly as useful as the other feature you can take instead, which we will be taking, called Nature's Veil. So as a bonus action, you can magically become invisible until the start of your next turn. You can use this a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus and you regain all expended uses when you finish a long rest. And you can kind of think of this as your invincibility frames if you get hit in one of the older SNES games. So on your next turn, you just use your bonus action to become invisible, which will most likely grant you advantage on all of your attacks for that turn. Then at 11th level of Ranger, you get another feature from your monster slayer called Magic User's Nemesis. So when you see a creature casting a spell 
or teleporting within 60 feet of you, which is probably the most relevant piece because I feel like there's constant teleportation or turning into bats or whatever. You can use your reaction to try to disrupt that magic. The creature must succeed on a wisdom saving throw against your spell save, which frankly, we didn't put a lot of points into wisdom, so it's not gonna help that much, but it's still an extra way to help impede your enemy. And if they fail on that save, their spell or teleportation is completely wasted. Then at 12th level of Ranger, you get another ability score improvement. And I want to help out your spells a little bit. So let's boost up our wisdom by two points, bringing it to 14. Then at 13th level of Ranger, you get access to fourth level spells. So you automatically get the spell Banishment, which is very powerful to have. Then at 14th level of Ranger, you get access to another favorite enemy. And I guess the last thing we could probably cover is maybe Fiends, which should cover pretty much anything you'd come across in the Castlevania games at this point. Additionally, at this level, you get the feature Vanish, allowing you to take the Hide action as a bonus action. Then at 15th level of Ranger, you get the final feature from being a Monster Slayer. And frankly, it's pretty darn powerful. It's called Slayer's Counter. So when the target of your Slayer's Prey tries to force you to make a saving throw, you can use your reaction to make a weapon attack against the creature. You make the attack immediately before making the saving throw. And if the attack hits, you automatically succeed at the save. Plus, you get to steal all the extra damage from that attack. Then at 16th level of Ranger, you get access to another ability score improvement. So let's boost up our wisdom again, which is going to help most of our spell stuff, which is even better because at 17th level of Ranger, we get access to fifth level spell slots and as a monster slayer that automatically grants us the spell hold monster which is a very powerful spell to have but there is a very big downside to this spell it's not gonna work against dracula because hold monster very explicitly says it has no effect on undead it will completely paralyze any other type of creature making it so any attack against them will automatically critically hit but it just isn't going to work against any of those undead which is a major downside especially for this build and i was going to do some multi-classing here but frankly it's just going to be more beneficial to keep going with ranger at this point so at 18th level of ranger you get feral senses allowing you to attack invisible creatures without any sort of disadvantage on it and you automatically know where invisible creatures are as long as they're within 30 feet of you. Then at 19th level of Ranger, you get another ability score improvement, so we're going to boost up our Wisdom one more time, which is very important for the final feature you get at 20th level, called Foe Slayer. So once on each of your turns, you can add your Wisdom modifier to either your attack roll or your damage roll when you happen to be attacking one of your favored enemies, meaning that the first hit from your attack with a whip is going to deal 1d4 for the basic whip damage, 1d6 for Slayer's Prey, another 1d6 if you happen to have Hunter's Mark active, plus 2 from your dueling fighting style, plus 5 from your strength modifier, and another plus 4 from your wisdom modifier, which is a pretty solid amount of stacking damage considering you're only using a whip. And then with your second attack, you can do that all again, but without your Slayer's Prey damage. And if the target of your Slayer's Prey happens to also try to force you to make a saving throw on a spell, you can attack them one more time, dealing all that damage again as your reaction. But when it comes to some spells you might want to pick up, Hunter's Mark is going to be great early on, but the spell Jump will help with some of that platforming, and Long Strider might make you power walk a little bit faster because I always got frustrated with how slow they walk in the Castlevania games. The spell Magic weapon could help you make your whip magical just in case you can't find a magical whip along your adventure. If you want to make that whip have some elemental damage, you can grab the spell elemental weapon. And if you want to really flourish that whip around and just crack it through the air, you can always use the spell Steel Wind Strike, dealing up to 60, 10 force damage to up to five different creatures, allowing you to then teleport to an unoccupied space you can see within five feet of one of those targets. That's gonna pretty well cover how to become one of the Belmonts from the Castlevania series between the overall build and the spells, and I wanted to focus on using a whip a little bit, so I had some fun with that. I was actually in a campaign where I played as a rogue, and our dungeon master had a special Christmas session where he didn't think anybody was ever gonna actually use a whip so he just gave away a plus one magic whip that was actually made of christmas tree light but he forgot about the fact that a rogue gets to add sneak attack damage to all of that magic damage and it really saved me later when i didn't have any other magic weapon let me know what you think about this build in the comments down below especially if there's anything you do differently to build any of the characters from the castlevania series if you want access to the character sheet for this build or any of my other builds feel free to check out my patreon linked in the description down below and i definitely wanted to thank them especially my players
player character patrons CGC, 2014, Appstorm, Godzilla Khan, Elisa Martinez, Anthony McDonald, Panda Milkshake, Alistar Nix, Ted Z, Andrew Nobles, Karkat Kitsune, Z13, Veryl Narivar, Daniel Galvin, The Dino 21, Chris Moak, and Benjamin. Then of course, there's the patrons I play D&D with, Shane Gilroy, Conman CX, Cyber Society, Talon Starkey, Brayden Aldridge, Eric Wade, Salvador, Devin Happy, and Kilo Kilo. Then going above and beyond anything ever imagined is my god tier level patron, Gamestake. So a very special thank you to him. And finally, if you made it all the way to the end of this video, let me know by hitting that like button and i'll be here hoping you roll at least three nat 20s in your next DD session especially if you want to play as one of the belmonts from the castlevania series in dungeons and dragons fifth edition